we are looking at collecting data. So there are four topics we'll cover, uh, types of data, random sampling, stratified sampling, and questionnaires. So the first topic, uh, types of data, we've got three different categories we can use to define different types of data. So the first one, qualitative versus quantitative. Well, qualitative is non-numerical data. It's things like, um, you know, it could be um, diaries or, you know, video transcripts or e uh, interviews with people or kind of, you know, open-ended um, survey questions, things like that. So things where normally it's the written word that we're um, kind of trying to glean information from. Um, it's, you know, you might you may get this more in kind of social sciences, right? You know, if you're doing like a kind of psychology study, you might be looking at the impacts of war on mental health or something. And you might read the diaries of people who were at war. Um, quantitative is numerical. So quantitative could be, for example, the number of students in a class, or it could be um, the number of years a prime minister has served or something like that. So it's, it's um, you know, very easy to quantify. Um, they're, the, they're the main two differences between those two. Uh, moving on to continuous and discrete types of data. Um, so this, this uh, way of um, categorizing data um, is sl slightly different. Um, continuous means that we can continue to uh, get more and more precise with our measurements. So for example, um, length, um, you know, length of a piece of string or someone's height. Um, we can we can continue to get more and more precise in how um, how we measure someone's height, right? You know, I could say, um, you know, some someone is one point eight five meters tall, but I could also say they're one point eight five four three meters tall, or I could get even more precise: they're one point eight five four three one six seven nine meters tall. I could keep going and be more and more precise, right? There's there's no end to it. Um, likewise with time. Um, you know, we could we could say, you know, Usain Bolt can run 100 meters in 9.58 seconds, but we could get more and more um, precise, right? We could say it's actually 9.581692.4 seconds. Um, there's no end in sight, really, with continuous data. We can get more and more precise. Discrete data is the opposite. Discrete data is already in nice categories for us. Um, so again, you know, this, this could be the number of students in a class, or it could be... Um, the number of cars that go under a bridge in an hour. Um, you know, it's 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 very clearly, we very clearly count up in chunks. You know, it's one car, then another car, then another car. Um, there's no kind of question of the precision that we have to give our answer to. Um, so that's the difference between those two. Um, if we now look at primary versus secondary, well, uh, primary data is data that we collect ourselves. Um, you know, we could go out into the field and uh, survey people, or we could go over to the bridge and count the cars driving under the, under the bridge. Um, secondary is when we use other people's data. Um, so for example, we could go to a public library um, and you know, read through newspaper articles and uh, we, could, we could use those articles to understand, um, you know, help us in our um, study of people who were impacted by war, right? We could, we could read the articles from the time or we may have, um, data from um, the highway traffic control, right? They they may have already um, counted the cars. You know, they, they use those uh, weird hoses to count the cars as they go over the hose. Um, we could use that data from from uh, some secondary source um, to help us work out the the frequency of cars um, passing a point. So that's the that's the two um, that's the, uh, those two um, explained there. So that's our three different um, ways of categorizing data. Um, let's move on to random sampling. Random sampling is really as the name suggests, right? So this is um, where we have a sample, you know, we could say have a school for the kids and um, we want to just work out, um, say, um, I don't know, the average uh, time that students wake up in the morning. And so we could just pick 50 people, 50 kids out of this um, school and ask those 50 kids uh, how, you know, what, what time do you wake up in the morning? That would be a random sample. Stratified sampling is a little bit more accurate often with the results that we get from it. Stratified sampling is, you know, say in our school, um, you know, we've got uh, say year sevens, we've got year sevens, year eights, year nines, year tens, and year elevens. 
well, let's say we've actually got, um, you know, for some reason, there were loads of people having kids um, when the year 11s were born. And so there are 100 year 11s um, and they're only, they're only like 40 year 7s. You know, I could, I could fill in these, um, fill in these as well, just make up some numbers. Um, well, if we know that there are far more year 11s than year 7s, well, surely we should take that into account, right? We shouldn't, we shouldn't pick, say, um, 10 students from year 7 and 10 students from year 11 because we're going to skew our results. We should, we should take into account the fact that there are loads of year 11s probably getting up super late, right? You know, teenagers always sleep in. So we're unlikely to, to get that information if we only sample 10 year 11s. If we, you know, you know end up randomly sampling 50 kids, um, you know, we're going to roughly get 10 from each group. But it's not likely to give us the most accurate results. What we should do instead is we should weight our results. We should, we should sample, you know, twice as many year 11s as we do year eights, because there are twice as many year 11s in the school as there are year eights. Um, so that's uh, stratified sampling. It's taking into account the distribution um, of your, your sample um, of data. Um, questionnaires, so response options for questionnaires. This is another thing that comes up quite often. Um, you know, imagine we want to, well, let's, let's say we wanna conduct this survey, right? We wanna ask people when they wake up in the morning. Well, we could say, um, do you wake up between um, eight and 8.15 or um, uh, 8.16 to 8.30 uh, um, or 8.30 or 8.31 to 8.45. Some people might sleep in right until the last minute. Well, is this is this the right way to go about this, right? What if someone wakes up at seven forty-five, right? Which you know, if we if we give them boxes that they can that they can tick to to pick each of these options, which box would someone tick if they wake up at you know seven forty-five? There is no box. Likewise, if someone wakes up at six o'clock in the morning, there is no box for them to tick. And so, whilst most people will fit into one of these these three boxes, we also need to provide a box that captures all those people who wake up before eight. So we could say um, anyone who wakes up before eight, tick this box. And likewise, if someone wakes up at 8.55, there's no box for them to tick. And so we could say before eight is one box and to capture the rest of the people after um, 8.45 will be another option. And that means that any, you know, whatever time someone wakes up, there's always a box for them to tick. Bias. So bias is in the way that we uh, structure our questions. Um, so, you know, with this questionnaire, we may say, um, you know, experts have, um, experts have concluded that waking up early is better for your health. When do you wake up? Well, would this be a good question to ask people? Because we've, we've just told them that if you wake up early, that's good. And if they've now got that in their minds, they're more likely to want to, you know, inadvertently lie on their questionnaire. They may, you know, if they get up at 8.30ish, um, they, you know, rather than ticking this box, they may say, well, you know, sometimes I get up at 10 past eight, I'll tick this box and, you know, I'll, I'll convince myself that I'm healthy. And so we always, we always need to take care of bias um, by making it uh, very clear that we, we don't kind of um, influence anyone's answers when we're asking them the questions. Let's look at a couple of exam style questions. So we've got a table showing the number of students in each year group at a school. Uh, Jenny is carrying out a survey for her GCSE mathematics projects. She uses a stratified sample of 60 students um, according to the year group. Calculate the number of year 11 students that should be in her sample. So this is very similar to the example we looked at on the previous page, right? So we can see here, we've got 130 year 11s in total. We need to work out, you know, exactly if we're, you know, if we're measuring 60 students in total, how many should we pick from year 11 to include in our sample? Well, first of all, we need to know how many students there are in total, right? To know, you know, what 130 actually represents as a fraction of the total number of students. So we can just do 190, 
plus 145 plus 145 plus 140 plus 130. And if I mark that into my calculator, uh, what do I get? 145 plus 145 plus 140 plus 130. We have 750 students in total at this school. Well, how can we work out what this is as a fraction of the total? Well, all we do is we say we've got 130 out of a total of 750. So this fraction is um, representative of the fraction of students that are in year 11. So if you want to um, you know, make sure that we have a representative sample of year 11s, we need the same fraction. Um, you know, we need, to, we need to sample the same fraction of students, right? So we need this fraction of 60 students. And the answer to this will then give us um, the number of students in year 11 that we need to sample. Um, so if I put this into my calculator, um, 130 over 750 uh, times 60, we end up with 10.4. Obviously, we can't sample you know, just the legs of a student. Um, so we're going to round this to the nearest student, which is going to be 10, point, uh, 10 students. Right, question two, final question. Alison wants to find out how much time people spend reading books. See, uh, she is going to use a questionnaire to, to figure this out. So uh, she wants us to design a suitable questionnaire um, for, for, this, uh, for this study. So how much time do people spend reading books? Well, you know, first of all, we don't know is that per day or per week. Um, I would say roughly, uh, you know, given how you know people tend to read books, they might read a book one day and then not read it for a couple of days and then pick it up again a couple of days after that, um, read a bit more. And so let's say on average, um, you know, we'll sample over a week. Um, you know, let's, let's say um, on average, how long? Do you spend reading per week? And this is our question. We also need to give people options to tick. So, um, you know, we can say some people don't spend any time at all, right? Or, or they, they read very, very little. And so we could say, you know, less than 30 minutes could be our first option, right? Some people don't uh, don't read much at all. Then we could say, um, you know, our next option could be say 31 to 60 minutes. Give them a box to tick there. Um, some people might do 61 to 90 minutes. We might do one more one like this. Um, you know, it's 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 often you know if you if you read more than an hour and a half or two hours a week, it's not that obvious to most people probably how long exactly they spend. All right, so we could do um, ninety one to um, you know between an hour and a half and three hours. And then the people who have the luxury of reading for more than three hours a week. Um, we could we could say um, you know more than three hours. And again, that will allow us to capture everyone's results, right? There there won't be there won't ever be a case where someone doesn't have a box to tick um, for this. So um, that would be a, a kind of fairly good way to, to lay out our questionnaire. Um, and that's the end of uh, chapter.